Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 20th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from a soon to be disclosed location. Cloudflare published a blog post and with it a tool to help you detect if your TLS connections are being intercepted by a proxy. Now, there are a number of legitimate reasons why you would like to do this. For example, anti-malware often does that. Of course, some enterprise uh, data leakage protection systems do require that TLS is being intercepted. But there are also a lot of ways how you could do it badly, how you could degrade the security of a TLS connection. And of course, end users may not necessarily be aware of their TLS connections being intercepted. Now, the system that Cloudflare is using has been open sourced by Cloudflare and essentially what they're looking for is, for example, mismatches between user agent and TLS fingerprints or also just the simple just changes to the user agents that sometimes are performed by proxies. Now, this tool won't necessarily detect all possible proxies, proxies that do a good job in actually forwarding all the relevant parameters from the client to the web server will not necessarily be detected. I played a little bit with the tool and it seems to be working quite well. Of course, there's a little bit of irony here with Cloudflare offering a middle box detection tool if really their business model is being a middle box. And according to email security firm Agari, business email compromise is moving over to SMS. What Agari is seeing, and uh, we have seen some of this uh, with some of the recent gift card scams and the like, is that the scammer is sending an initial email asking the victim to then contact them via SMS. The initial hook is very similar. The attacker claims to be, for example, a boss of the victim and then ask them to contact them via SMS uh, because there is some important project they need to talk about. And then the remainder of the conversation happens via SMS uh, where the attacker is typically asking the victim to purchase Amazon gift cards. The advantage of going via SMS is that these conversations, of course, typically do evade corporate filtering efforts. Also, a victim then has possibly less cues to look for in order to identify the messages as fraudulent. And John Bergbaum with Forcepoint reminds us that it is possible in JavaScript to send HTTP requests without some of the restrictions imposed by same origin policy. Same origin policy really only applies to XML HTTP requests and to the fetch API and the like if non-simple requests are being sent. If you are just trying to send a simple request without specifying any specific headers and without actually capturing any reply, then you're not restricted by same origin policy. This can be used for internal port scans and the like, and of course, the respective JavaScript libraries have been out there for years. For example, one of the port scanner JavaScript library that John refers to in his blogs was originally published back in August of 2006. And Cisco's Talus research team has an interesting blog post showing how UPnP can be used to find IPv6 hosts. UPnP, of course, can be used to discover hosts on a local network. If you do have a router that does allow outsiders to send UPnP queries to your network, then of course IPv6 hosts will possibly respond. And because IPv6 hosts can then be reached without restrictions due to NAT, this allows an attacker to potentially attack these devices behind your router. Cisco found a number of routers that do allow these type of queries and use them to enumerate hosts behind these routers. And Cisco found a lot of Android hosts and Linux hosts that of course happily communicate via IPv6. This issue of course then takes away some of the security through obscurity that you're gaining by hiding 
working in the vast IPv6 space. The Cisco blog also contains links to some lists of known exposed IPv6 addresses, like for example, the IPv6 hit list service that now lists 250 million exposed IPv6 addresses. However, you have to keep a little bit in mind that these lists are rather short-lived. Most uh, operating systems will use temporary addresses, which means that uh, once a day the addresses are going to change and these addresses are only going to stick around for about a week. Well, that is it for today. And now, quick update on the challenge to find my location this week. I have uh, one listener who is able to specify the city I'm in currently. I may post uh, some hint or so sometime tomorrow. Haven't quite decided yet, uh, but we got a large number of submissions already but only one user has really been able to get close. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.